When did you learn that your daughter had a romantic personal relationship with Mr. Wade? Well, about seven weeks ago when it, as a matter of fact, I, uh, uh, I, I just found out when other folks found out. Okay. But, that is, your daughter, as I understand it, never told you one time in the year of 2022 that she was dating Mr. Wade, correct? That's correct. Uh, and until recently, you didn't know from anyone, including your daughter, that she dated Mr. Wade, correct? That's correct. That is, whatever the uh, relationship is between father and daughter, uh, she kept that a secret from you, correct? Correct. That's all I need to know. Mr. Stockton. No. Good morning, Mr. Good morning. Correct. Good, good morning, Counsel. When your daughter moved or left the house that she owned, did did she say anything to you about having a large uh, savings of cash? Oh no, she. Oh no. See, maybe excuse me, and I, Your Honor, I'm not trying to be racist, okay? But it's a black thing, okay? You know, I was trained. And most black folks, they hide cash or they keep cash. And uh, I was, no, I train, you always keep some cash because uh, I've been places, and just because of the color of my skin, for example, I took a fellowship at Harvard when my daughter was just, uh, uh, if I might, Your Honor, if I might, when I was just, uh, she was just, you know, maybe three years old. And I remember going to a restaurant in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And I had a American Express credit card and maybe a visa or whatever. And uh, I had a lot of um, what they call traveler's checks. I don't even know if they still have traveler's checks, but traveler's checks. And there was a sign said, you know, with the credit card, for whatever reasons, the man would not take my American Express credit card. So I pulled out my visa card. And he wouldn't take my visa card. So then I pulled out my traveler's checks. He said, we don't take checks. Now, this was, these were traveler's checks. This was money. I had a $10 bill. I'll never forget this as long as I live. And uh, he said, uh, uh, the bill for my wife at the time, uh, Fonny's mother, Fonny and myself, was like $9.95. And I had a $10 bill. That was all that. And I always remember that. Um, but even before that, I've always kept cash, I, you know, and I've told my daughter, you keep six months worth of cash always. For example, I had three safes in my house. Uh, I put some of my clients stuff there, too, uh, things I didn't want other lawyers to be. I mean, because you're always in a firm and I knew that there were special conditions. So some of my clients things I would bring home put them in the safe, but I've always kept safes. And as a matter of fact, I gave my daughter uh, her first cash box and told her, always keep some cash. So is that a yes? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So now to Georgia, you're looking at live pictures right now of a Fulton County uh, courtroom. A judge is uh, hearing testimony to determine if the district attorney spearheading Donald Trump's election racketeering case in Georgia should be disqualified because of an alleged inappropriate relationship with the lead prosecutor there. Uh, CNN's Laura Coates is outside the courthouse. Uh, you've been watching this the last couple of days. Laura, I feel like we've been on a roller coaster ride. I mean, about 24 hours ago, you and I were talking <laughs> yeah. about this, and it seemed as though Fonnie Willis might be in some trouble, and then she walked into that courtroom yesterday. I mean, the eyes of the nation were on her. It was fascinating to watch, and then she did a pretty effective job of defending herself. What's happening inside now? What are you seeing? I mean, the adrenaline rush that was yesterday really continued into the courtroom today. Even though she was not there, we have been standing by to see who was going to testify next. We already know that she was not going to be in the courtroom already this morning. They feel that she had already done her due diligence and essentially undermined the case against her to disqualify her. Now, it's up to the judge to ultimately decide that issue. But where we are now instead is having her father. I mean, first of all, imagine that. Her father is now testifying. Why have they brought him in? In part to try to corroborate their case against her that suggests that she didn't really feel unsafe 
in her home, that she instead wanted to have some kind of a love shack in the city that she could have a more covert relationship with her lead prosecutor. Now, he did nothing to support that particular narrative, and instead, he talked about the real safety concerns. At one point, you even heard him from a father's perspective say that he personally observed graffiti with, with um, profanities on it, with the N-word, with the B-word, and had to take the graffiti away, not even notifying his daughter potentially of what was there. People waiting outside of her home, having to sweep the area every hour on the hour for bombs, with dogs and beyond. So he really described a real safety concern. He also described that he himself was unaware of any relationship between Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade until, frankly, the rest of the world knew it. Now, they tried to poke holes in that and undermine his credibility, and they were befuddled and incredulous at the thought that he did not know about that. But he reminded them, as a father, that he also did not share his love life with his daughter and vice versa, even naming a person that she was um, in a relationship with prior to Nathan Wade is who he was more familiar with. Now, we have a long way to go here to actually prove what is at stake in this case. But I'll tell you, Fonnie Willis yesterday, I want to remind everyone of this moment, she reminded everyone, despite this qualification leveled against her, she is not the one on trial. I'm right there. It's, it's like a, a woman doesn't have the right to keep her private life private. And I'm speaking on this because there have been all these in, intimations. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. And she's right. She's not on trial. She is not a criminal defendant, but she is an, a prosecutor who is facing disqualification. Why? Because they are alleging that she financially benefited from her relationship with Nathan Wade, the lead prosecutor. Now, in order to prove that, you have to actually show that conflict of interest created the opportunity not to have a fair trial for any of the defendants in this case. Remember, four have already pleaded guilty. They have a high bar to meet, and it's their responsibility to actually prove that. Now, one more point, Jim. There was a lot of discussion about cash. The father was asked a great deal about cash. She was asked a great deal about cash. Nathan Wade was asked about cash. I mean, cash apparently rules everything around us, okay? The issue here, why they were saying it, was because of, there was no records of repayment, that there was not the actual physical receipts. And they were trying to undermine the statement that she had cash on hand for that reason. But at the end of the day, it's not her burden to prove. Yeah. A lot of us still use cash. I mean, you know, it's not that old-fashioned. Maybe it's a little old-fashioned, but, you know. Cash is king with a lot of folks. I'm glad you said that because I am <laughs> selling Girl Scout cookies, Jim Acosta. I, I got will leave of them cash in your for office. You. I have a whole variety. Wonderful. There's, Noted. Thank you so much. There's going to be a big old envelope waiting for you, Laura. All right.